Okay, how do we actually build a, a V-shape in our body? Small waist, larger upper body around the shoulders. Now, if that's the case and we want to obtain that, the most athletic build we can, what I would start doing at that point is prioritizing your Let's dive into both body composition and muscle distribution to see how both of those can affect the way that we actually look and feel on the beach. The first one I wanna talk about is body composition. And when I say body composition, what I really mean is the distribution between muscle and fat. So really, what is your fat percentage as a ratio of your total body weight? When we look at our total body weight and we say that we are, let's say above 15% body fat, it's gonna be very difficult to actually see the muscle on your body. A lot of the muscle is gonna be covered up by a layer of fat. When we think about body composition, think about how much fat is actually covering the muscle that you have. So what is an ideal body fat percentage? Depending on the type of person that you are, in other words, what your genetics look like, what your activity looks like, that's gonna be very different from one person to the next. But I can say from experience that typically the target range for you is probably gonna be somewhere around 10 to 12% body fat. If I was sitting at a really high percent body fat and I wanted to get down to the optimal ranges that I'm talking about here in this video, this is exactly what I would do. First, I would try to identify what my maintenance calories are. Think of maintenance calories as the number of calories that you have to eat to not gain or lose any weight at all. So net zero, you eat this many calories, and that means your body is burning every single day that amount of calories. I would try to figure out that value. Now it may take a couple weeks, but using a few tools online and through just tracking your food, this can be really easy. Once you identify your maintenance calories, what I would do then is I would cut down around three to 600 calories from that value. And I would begin tracking your food pretty religiously for a while, I would say at least three or four weeks to understand what it is that you're actually eating that's gonna help you hit those targets. So now you're gonna be eating underneath your maintenance calories, so you'll be in what's called a caloric deficit. And this caloric deficit is going to help you lose the fat slowly. But one of the things that you need to absolutely make sure of when you're in a caloric deficit is that you're getting enough protein. If you're not getting enough protein, and you're in a caloric deficit, your body will start to metabolize the muscle that is on your body. Now, that is a really bad thing if you're trying to look your best on the beach or if you just want to preserve that muscle that you worked really hard for. So it's a no-brainer. We want to preserve as much muscle as possible and in order to do so, we have to be hitting our protein targets. What is a good protein target for you? What you could do is take your body weight, and eat at least one gram of protein for every pound of body weight that you have. The second major topic when looking our best on the beach is obviously muscle distribution. Now, if we are spending an insane amount of time in the gym working out our abs, for example, and not spending any time on any other muscle group, then I would say you're wasting your time if you wanna look your best on the beach. Now. What muscle groups do we need to work out to look our best on the beach? What I would do in this instant is I would look at, okay, how do we actually build a, a V-shape in our body? Small waist, larger upper body around the shoulders. Now, if that's the case and we want to obtain that, the most athletic build we can, what I would start doing at that point is prioritizing your shoulder workouts, your upper chest workouts, and your back workouts. Now, do not neglect legs. Legs is a very important thing. When you start thinking about how much time people are wasting in the gym doing ab circuits, they'll go on the elliptical for an hour and just and just and just go, you know? And and they're burning calories. That's awesome. But they did nothing when it comes to actually building muscle that's going to make them look good on the beach. Now, I know health goes beyond just looking good on the beach. And from a health and fitness coach perspective, it would be unethical for me to say you need to just prioritize one thing over the other. But if you think about the amount of time that you actually have in the gym, we have to start to prioritize what it is we want in the outcomes that we're searching for. If you want to be the best on the elliptical, then by all means continue to do hours and hours a week of the elliptical. 
but there is no elliptical race that you're training for. You're training for a goal, and I would argue that if you want to reach that goal, the elliptical is probably not the right choice. So trying to figure out what exercises, what routines can I do in the gym to build up the right muscle groups in my body to make me look the best on the beach. So now that you understand what muscle groups you want to prioritize in the gym, it's important to make sure that you have a very clear plan when you step into the gym and train each one of these body parts. The habits and rituals that you set in place now will obviously make you look good on the beach, but understand that this is a lifestyle. This is more than just looking good on the beach this summer. We wanna look good on the beach next summer, summer after that, and hopefully well into our 40s, 50s. We wanna feel good, we wanna look good, but it goes beyond just the six pack on the beach. So I just want you guys to understand that, that this video obviously is geared around looking our best on the beach, but I believe that if we wanna look good and feel good, it should be a byproduct of the things we are already doing. In other words, we're in the gym because we know it's good for us, and as a byproduct, we get the looks that we want for when we go to the beach, when we go to the pool, and it's really just a byproduct of the activities that we're already doing because we know deep down that we should be doing them. Anyways, guys, I hope you liked the video. If you did, like and subscribe, and let's get after it.